and good evening and welcome to some of the Highlanders basketball once again I am Kevin Scott and alongside me as usual is my main man Jeff Recenziano. How you doing tonight Jeff? How you doing Kevin? I am doing well. Tonight the some of the Highlanders, the two and three some of the Highlanders are hosting the 0 and 5 Medford Mustangs and what do you have to tell us about um, tonight, Jeff. Kevin, this is the first time the city of Somerville has seen the Highlanders in action on TV live since December 15th. That was a loss against Cambridge. Since then, they went to Waltham, they lost at Waltham, won at Malden, and lost at Everett. They lost at Everett 56 52. A lot of people are predicting that Everett would be one of the top teams in the GBL, and they are, Kevin. But what Coach Mull was talking to me before the game, what people have to realize right now is that the rest of the league needs to know that Somerville is alive and they're a top team ready to play against these other top teams. That's right, Chuck. Um, right now, you see the. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of lost right now. I was just looking at the ball that's playing. But um, what are the changes that Malil's had uh, with the team since December 15th? I noticed. I heard that um, Chad Bailey is running the point consistently Chad now. Chad Bailey is, is the number one point guard right now on the team. The last game against Everett, Coach Mo really feels that Chad Bailey, if he had played, he was out that game, he was sick. If he had played that game, they would have been able to take control of that game in the later parts of the game and then win that game. However, that did not happen, but they played him close. What Chad brings from the point guard position, at the one he provides rebounding and able to run the floor. That's what he can bring with his size. He can start the break and then run down, and he has with him running Mike Ragazio, Chris Gurrier. They fill the lanes, and they're looking to run this Medford team off the floor. This is the first time this year that this is a game that is a must win. It is not anything else but a win. If you look at this team, you're playing an 0-5 team. There are no excuses against this team. Right now, Somerville has to prove, and they are going to prove, that they are ready to compete with the top teams. Because once those teams that they lost to on the road, Waltham, Everett, they are coming here at the end of the month, end of January, early February. That's when Somerville needs to be clicking, and they feel they are ready to click at that time and make that tournament run that they are so hoping for. And a um, the, the couple of games that the Highlanders were away, um, the Malden game, I believe that uh, Carrington had a pretty big game. Carrington against Malden, the win, 73-66. Carrington scored 32 points. So he's leading the way far beyond the leading scorer of this team. Against Waltham, before that, they lost 90-67. to Tony had 22 points. Malden's, I just said, he had 32, and he led the way with 17 against Everett in the loss. But what hurt them in Everett was free throws, 14 out of 22 free throws. That's what they need to improve on in this game. That their shooting percentage has to go up because Medford, an inexperienced team, all those years, a couple years ago, Medford was one of the top teams in the GBL. Now Medford is down. They're rebuilding. There's nobody left from those championship teams. And you're going to see these younger players searching, reaching, and every time Somerville's got to capitalize on there. Okay, now we're going to get the starting lineups for your Somerville Highlanders.
is the national anthem. And we'll begin the tip off in just a minute. It doesn't appear we're going to get a starting fives, Kevin, but I'll run them down for you for Medford. Number 40, Clow McClarney. Number 20, Adam Raskin. 33, Roger Lau. 11, Dan Kesson Major. And number 35, Eric Doily. For Somerville, 44, Mike Ragazio. 43, Dolores Jean Baptiste. 31, Chris Gurrier. 50, Tony Carrington. And 40, Chad Bailey. Okay, and here we go. We got. See the referees telling all the players to pull up their shorts. Um, the two refs for tonight's game one is Dan Bryant, the other is Joseph Rotundi. What you see, Kevin, before the game is one thing that referees strongly enforce tuck in your shirts. The pull up your shorts. And pull up your shorts. But if your shirt's not tucked in, they'll stop the game, Kevin. Right now, Coach John Fusco, Fusco, putting up a fuss right now. What was that about, Kevin? I don't know. It looks, you would think this is a freshman team. And we, the Highlanders easily get the first tip. Chad Bailey with the ball, and here we go. Chad Bailey wide open at the top of the key. 4-3, no good. Tip, rebounded by Medford. Roger Lowe's dribbling the ball off the court. Has nothing, gives it up to number 12. That's just David Clayton. He gets smacked. He throws it up. Little man on the court picks up the rebound. It's two quick rebounds by Lau. Wow. Number 42 for Medford. I am going to actually, no, sorry, that's number 40. Kyle McClary. Gurrier knocks that one in for a 2 2 tie right now. You see right now, Jeff, the Highlanders in a 2 3. Matchup zone. Actually, they're playing man to man. That's what Coach Mo was telling me before the game. A lot of times they're playing in a 2 3 zone, but most of the time it's 2 3 matchups. So a lot of times you're going up and you're helping out the player down the other end. The Mustangs turn the ball over. Highlanders get control of it. Chad Bailey with the ball behind his back. Waiting for Carrington on the wing. Gurrier down, turns around for two. That's one thing you didn't see early on in the year, Chris Gurrier down on the block. Now he's been working on it all year and he's going to become a dominant force in the GBL. To foul on Dorleroyd, his first, team's first. Right there, Kevin, that's just plainly reaching. He lost his footing. And a lot of people say, what do you do when you're tired? You reach. Game just started, Jeff. Well, <laughs> Some of us aren't in the greatest shape, Kevin, but Dolorite is in tremendous shape. Just Roger Lowe with the ball. So it's around. not being tired, it's being lazy. Mustang swinging the ball around the perimeter, back over to the wing. Little head fake, drives baseline, gets smacked in the face by... No There's two fouls on Dolorite, so he's coming out of the game right now. Coach Malone's not doing anything right now. Oh, that's too easy. Quick basket there by Eric Doyley. Chad Bailey crosses up. Tipped by Medford, still hounding this ball. Kevin, that's what I was seeing right now. You see a very vocal coach from Medford, completely going ballistic right now. All over his team right now, it's a tie game, but they are hungry. They're on five. They want to get at it the same way that Somerville wants to prove that they're ahead. Medford wants to prove that they can win and they can come in here and win because last year they were one on one. Last year this game could have gone either way. You remember last year was an overtime game here. Basically, I believe it was the same day last year, Kevin. Overtime win by Somerville against Medford. They ended up being one on one against them. And that's what happened last year. Most of the time, they ended up one and one against every team. That they, let me correct myself there, they did not win, wind up one on one against every team. The only team they beat on the road last year was Malden, and that's the same thing this year. Somerville has to prove that they can win on the road. They're playing teams close at home. They start to run out of gas towards the end of the game, as you saw in the Cambridge game. The last game that we saw here was they played Cambridge tough the whole first half. They are down by four points at halftime. Then the second half, they got blown away. It was a 15-0 run, I believe, coming out of the half. 
that's what they got to prove, that they can hang with these teams at home, especially on the road. Kylan is in ball, inbound the ball. Chad Bale with it inside the Carrington. Goes out, can't make the layup. Metro looking to push the ball now. Right there, Ragazio has to completely learn to box out number 35, Doyle. He's all over it. What kind of a shot was that, Kevin? Oh. Ragazio with the rebound. Bailey looking to push it now. Got a kick ball. He's going to reset the shot clock. Doyle pulling out the two inch set right there, Kevin. I originally thought that was a pass. Carrington driving in. Finger roll for two. And those are the type of things that Carrington has to prove he has the ability to do instead of just staying out, hanging out at the three-point line. He has to prove that he can drive the lane. Woo! Nice move there by Roger Lowe. Roger Lowe controlling the Quick boards, running pass. the break. Chad Bailey for three. Ooh, in and out. Hunters can't get, get control of the rebound. Medford pushing the ball now. Somebody's got to get a body on Doyley. Nobody's boxing on. It's two straight defensive rebounds for him. Got travel on... The Mustangs. Oh, come on, Ragazio. Hines pick up the loose ball. Woo! Just swooping in there. Nice move there by Chad Bailey. And again, Somerville staying in the 2 3 zone. Medford just passing the ball around the perimeter. Oh, just throwing the ball away. Nice pass to Chad from Chad to Tony Carrington for two. Mustang just passing the ball around. That's a double dribble, Kevin. It is a double dribble. Highlanders are playing some soft defense. There's no reason these guys should be running in there so easily. But they're getting rebounds and picking up loose balls. They're looking to push. Carringer gets bumped on the floor. Basket does not count. Fouls on number 12, David Clayton. His first, team's first. What you see right there, Kevin, is on their zone. They're completely playing a very stagnant 3 2 zone, not moving their feet at all. And right there, Medford, as weak as they are, they're going right to the hole like nobody's standing there. What you see right now, number 45, Ricky Oliveira, is coming to the game for Dolor Jean Baptiste. So Gazio's first two points. We have a 12 6 lead right now for Somerville. Stay in front of them. Stay down low. So everybody's just standing around, Kevin. Nobody's moving. They're dribbling right through it. I would call a timeout because that that's how, all it, all four of their baskets have been like that. And that's not even a press. Nobody's pressing down there. Timeout. As Roger Lau now has four points, controlling the offense, dribbling the ball, rebounding, and now with two straight layups. Mo moving screen on Oliveira. Runs right into number 33, Roger yeah. Lau. Kevin is begging for a timeout. Ricky Oliveira first foul. It's a team's third, and with 11.24 left in the half, Kevin's request becomes true, and Somerville calls a timeout. Every, Jeff, every single um, field goal that the Mustangs have had, aside from the, the fast break one that they just had, has been a total lapse, lapse of defense. The Highlanders just watch them go right by them, and no one help picks them up. There's no help defense at all, Jeff. Exactly. Right now, we'll let you listen to the Summer High School varsity cheerleaders. Whoa. Easy there, buddy. <laughs> Kevin, what we were looking at before in the team motto this year for Somerville, team first, ego second. That's what Coach Muller was talking to me about before the game. This is the game where they have to prove to themselves that they play together as a team. And right now, all this time down in this end, they're not playing together as a team. They're leaving, letting Chad down low by himself, nobody helping him out. Got knocked to the ground on his own, it wasn't a foul. Knocked to the ground, stole the ball, 
but they're still back in the 3-2 zone, Kevin. Ooh, wow. Big out there kicks the ball. Keep it, Tony. But he get, he's unselfish, gives it to Chad. Nice play. There's some unselfish basketball. Team basketball. Team. <laughs> Team first, Kevin. Oh, Curry with the big steal. He has Carrington wide open. He doesn't see him. Ball tipped away by Medford. Still highlighting his ball. Curry showing nice footwork there on the slide into the curtain. As he almost slides into the now power forward, Frankie McPherson, walking across the court there. Curry into Carrington. Carrington spins. Ooh. This is a layup. Rebounded by Medford. Medford pushing the ball up the court. Ricky Oliveira gets the rebound. Chad Billy doesn't have anything, decides to pull it up, run the offense. 14 to 10 Highlanders, 10 26 remaining. Chad just throws the ball away, but Gurry picks up the loose ball. Carrington walks it back up to the top of the key. Little hesitation, pulls up for the jumper, in and out. But Gurry with a tip, he can't get control of it. Oliveira gets the rebound. Whoa, who just got smacked? A second. How was that not a foul, Kevin? But how is that? Call, how I guess they're calling that, that off a, of Ricky. I guess they're calling that a block. But if it's a block, why is it out of know, bounds? Off of very confusing. Oh, look at that! Gary with a big rebound. Chad, quick outlet to Ricky. Back to Chad. Bailey crosses over. Doesn't have anything. Crosses back over, Oliveira for three. Back ends it, but Chad Bailey picks up the rebound. Carrington with the ball at the top. That's what Coach Moore was talking about to me also before the game came. If they don't have their number break, they want to get into their offense and run it through. Oliveira can't make it. Oliveira needs to learn a nice up fake on those shots. Or he's going to get blocked every single time. Uh oh, oh, Chad has a wide open left. Oh. You can tell he wanted to dunk that, but he got bumped from behind. There was no call. Crowd going crazy here, and Chad misses. Ah, uh, very right. blocks the little man shot out of bounds. In for the game for the Medford Mustangs right now is Rick Cormio. Rick Cormio. Roger Lowe with the ball on the baseline. Back up to the wing to Dave Clayton. Wow, Agaria, please. In and out, but no rebounding. Roger Lowe! Following Ragazio, his first, team's fourth. Roger Lowe is gonna go to the line, Kevin. I think Lowe is the one that, uh, I mean, Ragazio was moving. If he, Ragazio had st stood still, held on to his feet, he would have been fine. Also into the game is number 10, Heather Serrano in for Chad Bill. And right now, Kevin, Heather Serrano has taken over the backup point guard position. Not that quick, Kevin, but he's a very smart player, soccer player. There you go. Foul on Derek Cormillo. Team second, his first. Blocking foul, they call that on the floor, Kevin. Wow. It appeared that Ricky was going. It looked like he was going up. It looks like he was going up from that replay. Carrington in. Oliveira thinks about the three. Header. Ooh, too long, but Ragazio tips it back out to Header. And we got a reset of the shot clock. The shot clock's not moving. Okay, now it is. Carrington with the ball. Carrington thinks about the three. He drains the three. That was a two, Kevin. He was over the line. It's six points for Carrington. 16-11 lead right now for Sumrall as they're starting to get their offense in sync. And you see right now, up right on the press, but they dribble right through it. Wow, that's Three tough. pointer by McClarney, his fifth point. 
Somebody has to help out Header here. That's oh, how nice you break pass. It. That's how you break a press. Oh, Regazio has to make go up strong. Forget the finger roll. Nice hustle there by Mike Regazio for two. That's staying strong, getting his own offensive rebound. Oliver picks up the loose ball. He they have a three on two. Oh. Passes too far ahead for header from Ricky Oliveira. Kevin, another difference in this game is you're seeing a lot of low post activity by Tony Carrington. We were talking about before the game that Tony was just staying stagnant out in the offensive outside the three-point line looking to fire up threes. Now he's showing different movements on his offense. Nice pick by Oliveira, and he gets fouled. Foul on Doyle, Coach John. Fusco from Medford saying it was the other way around. Doyle gets called for the foul, team's third. And we have an 18-14 lead right now for Somerville. Dario about to inbound the ball right to my right. Serrano over to Carrington. Carrington brings it back to the top of the key. Little crossover, goes nowhere, gets it stripped right out of his hand. Number 20, Adam Raskin just got away with a carry there. Raskin with the ball. Medford just taking time, swinging the ball around the perimeter, waiting for their shot. Ooh, Serrano should have took that one. Nice ball movement by the Met, by the Mustangs. You got it. Nadeel stepping on the line. Nadeel dribbles the ball right out of bounds. But you're being gonna play up on Nadeel, Kevin, because Nadeel is a very good three-point shooter. Serrano has three seconds to get it over. He gets it over the fine. Breaks it perfectly to Carrington for three short. Oliver gets the loose ball, thinks about it, goes up for two. It's Oliveira's first two points. That time he was conscious. He didn't want to get blocked that time. But look at this. No deep. Oh, that's a charge! Ref makes a no call there. Travel. Gurrier with a big rebound. Quick outlet to Carrington. Four rebounds for Gurrier. Carrington, nice dump down the... Oh! Come on. They deal with the rebound. Foul on Ricky Oliveira, his second team's fifth. Chad Bailey coming back in the game right now, probably for Ricky. It's Ricky now at two points. Actually, Richie takes out Dolaroy, who just came back in the game. With 5.50 left to go in the half, Summerall has a six point lead. And watch out for Nadeel coming off a screen right now for a three, as we have Gosner coming in the game too, Kevin. Ricky sitting down with those two personal fouls. Watch out and Raskin in the corner. Oh, a lot of bounds off Redford. 12, Bound David Clayton. Got a little intimidated by uh, Gosner's size right there. Kevin just threw the ball right out of bounds. Gosner, see right there, referee Tim Bryant. Actually, I'm sorry, not Tim. Tim is his brother, Dan Bryant, making Gosner tuck in his shirt. Ooh, got to be careful there, Chad. Almost got it stolen from Serrano with the ball now. Hit her very close to the sideline. Godsner calling for the ball. Give it to him. Offensive foul on Godsner. Oh. That's tough because the Medford player was just grabbing Godsner. Godsner was just trying to fight over it. Team six foul. Next foul war over the limits. Medford is taking their time on offense. Only down by six points, five minutes left in the half. Nice ball movement. Nice ball movement by Medford Mustang. First two for Nadeel, Kevin, a very smart player. Going right to the nice. hole, trying to draw the foul. Chad shoots it too long. Undercut, Godsner gets. <laughs> Lands right on top of David Clayton, completely undercuts him. Nice 
Nice defense by Gosman. Hold your ground, baby. Right there. Oh. Ooh. That's tough, though. That was good team defense there by the Highlanders. It was just a nice shot by number 35 for, for Medford. Carrington looking to push the ball. He, he doesn't have anything. Ooh, almost steps on the sideline there. 22-18, Highlanders four minutes to go in the first half. Carrington crosses over, foul line jumper. Oh, God, they're over the over back. back. Completely crashes into number 11, David Kessen Major. Gazi now of his second foul. Now we're over the limit. Kessler Major going to the line where Gazi will about to come in with four minutes to go in the half. One and one. How is that one and one already? I, I thought the Highlanders would have been would have been in the bonus by now. Dolaroid, Gosner, and Oliveira all have two fouls. And one foul on Ragazio, so we have his Casa Major going to line. Casa Major showing some athleticism, Kevin. Jumping all around. Lefty, too. Rebounded by Mike Ragazio. Header pushing the ball up. Splits the defense, but he gets it straight. Ragazio smacks the name playing up inside the head. But I believe they're going to call the foul on Serrano. So fouls on Header. Now we just going to be a free replay. throw fest here the rest of the time. Heather threw an elbow, Kevin, and that's they caught him. Oh, yeah, there you go. There's a right foul there, right there. Right grabbed him with the arm. Threw an elbow well before that. Should have been a foul well before that. It's Clayton going for the one and one. Barely oh, even ball, touches sure, the rim. Nate Deal jumps right in there for the rebound. Nate boxes out. Nate Deal, a scrappy player, Kevin. Wow. Two-point lead for the Highlanders. No foul. Nice move there by Chad Bailey for two. All right, there's some of them proving they can run them off the court. You got to be able to, if you don't have the break, as you don't have that opportunity, they got to run through their offense fluidly. They're taking a lot of time off the clock, making Medford work. Right now, in the, in the first half, their problem is defense. Exactly. They're playing a very lazy three two zone. You can see them. They're up on them, but they're not making it. There you go. Movement. Come on, Header. Header. Oh. Double, header with a double dribble. He got too anxious. Wanted to give Chad Bailey the ball. Wanted to give him a nice bounce pass, which you want to do on the break. Tony was right there. Header misplayed it. Pulling off the press. They're going to match him up. Three two zone. Foul on Ragazio. There's no need for that, Kevin. Now Ragazio has two fouls. So you have four players with two fouls. You're getting into foul trouble against a team that you have no business getting into foul trouble against. Doily going to the line for the one and one. Coach Moore is looking up and down his bench to see who he, who he could put in for Ragazio. Gosner has two fouls. Doily with... Baptiste, how many ba Baptiste Baptiste first. Has? Baptiste has two. Jeez. Under three minutes left in the first half. Look at that. No one boxing out for the Highlanders. Another foul. And we got Let's another see. foul. Looks like that's going to be on Chad. Yeah. yeah. Fouls on Chad. That's his first. Team's over the limit. That's 19 fouls, Kevin. After that, we're going to the double bonus. Casting major right now. Coach Mullo saying it's ridiculous. That should have been a one and one there. I don't think he was shooting, Kevin. He got a rebound right there, too. I said the nine in the double bonus? Not yet. I have him for nine. Chad looking to split the D. Nice pass to Carrington. He falls away for two. That's what you're seeing right there, Kevin. They're completely outplaying him down in the offensive end. Just shows their steps above him on the offensive end, on the defensive end, they're completely getting outplayed. And the Mustangs call a timeout. Who's going to call for a timeout for whatever reason, Kevin? With two. Oh, yeah. 227 remaining in the first half, as you see the, the move by Tony Carrington. To, nice little fall away for two. And we let you enjoy the Sum of the Highlander cheerleaders.
Kevin, this gives me an opportunity to run down the crew on cameras tonight. George Wood, Thomas Palmer, and Kevin Canavan. Directing this game is Robert Coludi. On graphics, Linda Sacchenti. And on audio, Todd W. Glacey. Also bringing you replays tonight is Bob Coludi. 227 left to go in half. Somerville is over the limit. 26 20. What the heck lead. is this? Kevin, right now I'd call a timeout if I was Coach Malol just on that play alone. Oliveira over to Carrington. That Carrington should not happen coming out of a timeout. Five rebounds right now for Doyley. Ball goes up to the top row, Kevin. How did that happen coming out of a timeout? Tipped. Tipped. Karen to get, picks up the loose ball. They're looking to push it now. And you see Steven Celestin coming in. Nice pass. Double pump for two. Celestin bringing instant offense off the bench, and that's what they need so desperately right now is they're only up by four points. Instant offense. Instant offense, Kevin. That's what they used to call you back in your day. Fusco said, you gotta be kidding me. I don't know what he's, what he's being joked about here. Joke's on me, Kevin. The deal travels. No baseline, Highlanders. Boys and girls at home, remember that. Cut no off baseline. the baseline. There should be no baseline shot. And deal, not the fastest man in the world, but fast enough to get in by right all the Sun World defenders. That's two plays that he's done in this game, same exact way. Carrington for three. He back wins it. Oliveira gets a big rebound. Double pumped. Where's the foul, baby? But Celestin, instant offense. <laughs> Four points for Celestin. <laughs> Offensive rebound and scores. Six point lead for the Highlanders. One minute left in the first half. Fusco not messing around. He's going to bring Lau and, and McClarney back into the game. Next dead ball. Double pump. This is only fouls off Garia. Here comes 33, Lau and 40, McLaren in for Nadeel and Clayton. Clayton with four points, Nadeel with two, so they're providing help off the bench, Kevin, keeping them within striking distance here with 50 seconds left. Forty seconds left. Lau driving in at will. Lau is quick. Getting right by you. That's seven points for Lau. No excuse for Lau at all because every one of his points is going to the hole. Oh, thank you. I can see if you go driving to the hole when you're playing man to man, but if you're playing a 3 2 zone, there should be absolutely no layups occurring None. at all. 28 seconds left, Kevin. The shot clock should be off. Gurria goes up, double pumps for two. Now let's see if the Highlands can get one defensive start with no fouls here. No fouls, no layers. Play straight up D now. Coach Mo, echoing your remarks, Kevin, right now. No fouls. Stop playing with your hands, wow. play with your feet. McClarney. Don't, no, ah. Uh, Please. Throw it up, throw it. Chad in for two. Oh! No basket, oh! no basket, no basket. Chad points to the crowd. 32-26. Wow. That's tough. And that's how we will leave you right now with a performance by the Somerville High School varsity cheerleaders. 32-26 lead for we'll the Highlanders. We'll see you in 10 minutes. They lose this game by two points.
second half about to start, Kevin. 16 minutes on the clock, 32-26 lead for Somerville. And didn't give me enough time here to run down the scores, I Kevin. I'll just give them as we're going here, you know? Roger Lau with the ball, and he had uh, seven first half points. And yeah. McLaren, McLaren with five points in the first half. Oh, look at that. Right through, Kevin. The same thing. Oh, Over the back. back. Please. Chad Bailey can't pick up the loose ball. Roger Lau going in for two. No, keep. Oliveira with the rebound. Lau goes character. to the hole with reckless abandon. But guys who can't control it. Right now, Coach Murph next to us. Going ballistic about something, Kevin. Don't know what. Coach Mole. Here he is, here he is. No, a nice pass by Lau. No! Oh. Woo! That was Five points pass. now for Casson Major. Nice pass. Beautiful there by Doily. Carrington for three. There we go. Three-pointer for Carrington. Carrington now leading the way with 13 points. You know what I don't understand about referees today? How was this referee at the top that was near our closest to us? How did he make that three call and Carrington was already in the corner? That sh shouldn't that be this guy's job? He was right there looking at his feet. Makes no sense to me. Anyway. Referee wrote Joseph Rotundi not making the call. It was Dan Bryant. What Again, kind of defense is this? Seven points now for McLaren. Just completely busting out the zone. Get there, Get there. Carrington to Oliver. Oliver thinks about the three. He's falls short, tipped by Gurrier. But Gazio goes up strong for two. Gazio with the offensive rebound. That's six points now for Gazio. Four rebounds total. Well, Gazio hurt himself in the first half, Kevin, with two fouls. Not playing a lot of minutes. Okay, that's why you're an 0-5 team there, buddy. But anyways, Magazio slaps it right ball. back to him. Wow, nice move there by Tell number right 11. Right now, Casa Major, Kevin, you got to sign him up for one of your teams right now with seven points. Don't walk into the trap, Chad. Carrington for three. He falls short. Falls quick. Come on by Lau. Roger Lau, speedy. Oh. That should be a technical foul. Chad slapping the backboard. No call. Guess where he, he did touch the ball a little there, Jeff. Three point lead for the Highlanders. Carrington hard off the glass. Roger Lau. Carrington now with 15 them. points. Roger Lau just playing reckless abandoned offense and defense. Should have got the charge called on Carrington. A five point lead for the Highlanders. Should be a foul right there on Carrington. It's a nice strip. Oliver picks up the loose ball. What? What are you doing? Come on. Oliveira steals the ball. Here comes your main man. Celestian in the first half, Kevin. Four points. What's your nickname, Celestian? Instant offense. You know, Ricky about to. Instant offense for. Celestian. Chad holding it out, start the offense. Chad, oh, Clear foul on out. the floor. Foul on Raskin. His second team's first of the half. Instant offense was not really a nickname I had for <laughs> Celestian, Kevin. Instant offense was just what he was providing. Tony Carrington drives. Oh, blocked by Doily. Nice defense. That's two there. blocks. Wow. This guy can shoot it. I'd call a timeout right now, Kevin. If I was Coach Mole, two point lead only with 2 12 25 left to go in the first half. Gurrier with the foul line, Jay. He, it's short. He gets his own rebound, double pumps. He can't make it. Another rebound. Nice hustle by That's Chris. That's how Gurrier. you do. Stick to it. Eight points for Gurrier. Two offensive rebounds on the play. Step up. That's five rebounds total. They can't stop Lau. Travel. Fusco begging for the foul. 
It's still a two-point lead. Travel on Celestian. Oh, wow. Who called a timeout there, Kevin? Coach Miller called a timeout. And Celestian had a wide open layup. Celestian had a wide open layup here on the sideline. Oh, jeez. Celestian. And we'll let you enjoy the, some of the Highlander cheerleaders. Eleven fifty six left in the game. 41-39 lead right now for Somerville. Coach Moore cannot be happy at all, Kevin. You see right there, shot by Kevin Kevin Canavan. A little out of focus. A little out of center too, Kevin, please. Let's go! <laughs> and I don't mean to be hard on the cameraman, folks, but Kevin is part of the Somerville High School TV media production class that I co-teach with members from the Executive Office of Communications along with Mr. Charles Hickey from the high school. Kevin is one of our students. Okay, here we go. Two-point lead for the Highlanders. Into Regazio. Nice, simple offense. He can't finish it, but Gurriel goes up. Oh! Foul on Doyle, his second. Gurriel just becoming an offensive rebounding machine. Now with seven rebounds, Gurry are going to be going to the line for two. And it was Regazio's initial miss that forced Gurry for that rebound and stayed with it. And that's what you want to do. You want to stay with those rebounds. Celestine way down here waiting for defense down at our end, Kevin. Air ball. Gurry getting a little too involved with his form. Actually, Gurry completely untucks his shirt there. Referee should stop the game, give him a warning. Doesn't ignore the warning. Steven, way down. Come on, grab the rebound. Come on, Carrington. There you go. That was very slow there by Carrington, but he gets the job done. Needed a break there. Step up. Up and jump. down. And he's got a jump ball, he's got a highlight. Possession arrow pointing the Highlanders' way. Now it turns to the other way in case of a jump ball goes to Medford next time down the court. That was the first time in this game that you saw any type of team defense by the Highlanders. Uh, Chad Doily. throws the ball away. Doily quick too, Kevin. Look at that speed. Woo! Throws it right at Chad. Almost like they're playing dodgeball. Oh, come on. Doily knocks it right out of bounds. Chad with a turnover. Trying to get too fancy there on the break. Just nice bounce pass. Nice and simple, Kevin. Let the offense flow. However, 17 points for Carrington leading the way on that put in the last possession. They deal about the check into the game right now for Medford. He's coming in for Lau. Kevin, I want to take Lau out of the game at all. Lau with no fouls. Nine points. Controlling the offense, controlling the boards. Gurry not expecting that pass. The Highlanders don't seem like they're in sync at all today. Out of sync and out of mind. Chance with the ball, using that pivot. Celestian for three. It's good. Celestian now with seven points. I don't believe he's missed a shot yet, Kevin. Chad tips it into the hands of the fans here in the front row. Fans, by the way, that were going crazy after he dunked the ball at the buzzer. There you go, big rebound by Mike Ragazio. Carrington looking to push the ball up the court, he has nothing. A little hesitation, crossover. Gets it stripped from him, no foul called. They do, right on the floor. We'll take it all the way. There you go. Let's go, come on Carrington! <laughs> Calling a double dribble on Carrington. All you can do is just throw your hands up, Jeff. Had a nice break. Everything looked to be turning around for Somerville on this play. Header coming in the game, taking Tony out. No need for it. Pass the ball up, get the ball to Chad, let him bring the ball up. Now we'll let Header control the offense and allow Chad to work on his offense. Oh, there you go. Nice tip by Ragazio. Move that pivot foot. There should be a travel call, nothing. 
in and out. Ball tipped off the Header. backboard. Little man on the court picking up the rebound. Header looking to push the ball. Doesn't have anything. Gives it to Gurrier. Chad Bailey. Foots on the line. Oh, oh they called it a three. Looking oh. good. Call it a three. That's nine points for Chad. As Somerville starts to break away as they've increased their lead to 10 points here in the second half. Ooh, oh. For the alley oop. They deal going strong. Nice rebound by Regazza. Quick outlet to Chad Bear. They got two on one. He pulls up for the foul line, Jay, for two. And Kevin, that's we what Chad. We got timeout coming by That's Metric. what Chad has really improved his game on. Being able to penetrate strong. The defense is with you. You think they're going to move along with you. People think he's going to go in for a layup. But he's not, Kevin. He's coming in for the pull-up jump shot. And that's what is Chad's strongest move right now. And we will now let you all enjoy a performance by the Somerville High School varsity cheerleaders. Here we go, Kevin. Let me run down the crew one last time for all of you at home. The viewing audience are watching images right there by Kevin Canavan on camera. George Wood, Thomas Palmer right there. That's Tom's camera. Being the director of this game is Bobby Coludi, audio Todd W. Glacy, graphics Linda M. Sacchenti, and replays Bobby Coludi. Then we got a problem with the shot clock here. When they reset it, it goes to 45. That's for the girls. You see a replay of the <laughs> see a replay of the some of the Highland the cheerleaders. But uh, shot clock is all messed up right now. Right now they're resetting it. 30 seconds, 30 seconds blinking right there on the shot clock. Actually, three people right there trying to operate it. Jerry Knight, Mark Kerwin, and Stacy Delano. Stacy Delano now with the control in her hand. A, how many people does it take to reset a shot clock? I don't know, with Jerry Knight, Kevin, right now, he has it in his hands. Now there's four people around there. There's four there. people right now. Referee Dan Bryant next to us, joking with us. <laughs> 9.13 left to go in the game. Somerville has increased their lead now, 51-39, <laughs> and basically has been the stepping up of the defense, Kevin. Medford still there. You see it's still at 45. And, Kevin, the last game that... It was actually it wasn't the last game. Maybe we were fine the last game. Two games ago, there was a girls' game in a holiday hoop fest. There was trouble with the shot clock, and in that game, they played a few minutes without it. This is a new piece of machinery that has shown up. So a lot of people think new machinery should have no problems. It's new fangle technology. It's new technology, Kevin. They wanted to bring the shot clocks above the rim to get it off the floor. It helps the court. It helps us to see it, but the viewers at home taken away from a gift that they used to have because right in the corner you used to have the shot clock on the floor so at home you could see it and you could see it right now now you can't see it because it's above the rim and again the game is not set up for the viewers at home the game is for the players on the court and that's what helps well, there's no need to freak out over the buzzer they're trying to fix it let's simply hang in there they're not doing it on purpose Jerry Knight is a jokester. However, he is not doing this on purpose. Coach Malone not happy about it at all. But Kevin, this gives me an opportunity to run down what has really turned this half around is the rebounding. Right now, Mike Ragazio with six rebounds total and it's been four defensive rebounds. It has really helped out on the defensive end with Medford still getting to the lane at will. Going through right to the basket, but this half, they're missing their shots because some of those stepped up their defense. They've stepped up their defense underneath the basket, in the paint, but they have not stepped up their defense again to allow them to penetrate. And that's what's killed them. Penetration. Okay. Oh, and again, I think we might have it here. In a 3-2 zone, there should be no penetration whatsoever. Stop it. Wait, I think we're gonna get it. Reset the shot clock. There we go. Now it's running down, and we have, again, 51-39 lead. There you see the Summer High School cheerleaders practicing their moves, trying to get the crowd pumped and jacked. The number of people in the crowd tonight, too, Kevin. 
There we go. Nine minutes left in the game. 51-39 Highlanders. Memphis pushing the ball, snapping the ball around the perimeter, back to the top of the key, inside to the paint. Nice ball movement by Mustang. Oh, Regazio on the floor. Jump, Jump ball, ball Medford possession, ball. Medford and Kevin. One thing I've noticed with Dan Casamajor, every single pass he jumps up like he's trying to hurdle over somebody and throws the ball. So that'd be a good way to scout this team. Just know, get Casamajor off his feet, hands right up. It'd be a turnover every time. Right now, three seconds on Casamajor. Oh, gotta take that, Gurrier. Chad Bill with the steal. He Look got a three on two. Takes it to the middle. Little finger roll for two. 13 points for Chad. Mustangs is taking the time. Dribbles oh, right through the middle, call the foul and header. Coach Moore wants him to make the trap. You keep, you stay on your feet, don't reach in. It's first foul and header, Kevin. Actually, the first foul of the half for the Highlanders also. Oh, Again, dribbles right travel. through. Oh, nice D by Chris Gurrier. Again, Ragazio just controlling the boards. Seven rebounds for Ragazio. Had it controlling to Chad Bailey into Gurrier. Kicks it back out to Bailey. Bailey for three. Short. Ragazio with the rebound, but we got a foul. Oh, and a foul on Doyle, it looks like. Oh. oh, that's tough. They call a foul on... Foul McClary, his first. It wasn't even on Ragazio. Teams... Third of the half. Bailey with the ball out of bounds to Header. Header thinks about the three. He shoots the three. He drains the three. Header's first three points of the game. 56 39 lead. Right now, someone will begin to run away with this game again where it should be. Header to Celestian. He still kept, keeps control of it. Gives it to Bailey. Bailey thinks about it. Kicks it over to Header for another three. That's short. Ragazio, Celestian had the ball in his hand. Ragazio jumps right over him. Uh, Coach Will crying for a foul, but again, Kevin, the thing that is hurting this team so obviously is the lack of a low post game. Again, in the first half, you saw Tony Carrington a little offense in the low post, but again, it is just non existent. Lesson crossing over. Oh. They, see, those passes, I, I don't blame. You can't blame. Ow. Oh. Ooh. Chad landing on Header's foot. Looks like Lau is going to go to the line. But going back, as, as you see the replay here, Chad going up, falling right over him. Oh. You got lucky there. Right there, see, Kevin, you don't want to land on your wrist. Land on your wrist, you might dislocate it, especially your shooting hand. But going back to the um, to the other side um, for the Highlanders on offense in the low post, Gurry has to learn to keep keep the defender off the off his back. Get your hand to where you want the ball, where you feel comfortable, and get in the ball in the post. And tell the point guard tell the point guard to give you the ball right where your hand is. Two times, oh, as you see, the Highlanders turn the ball over again. Wow! Wow! Going up. He gets fouled again. Who's the foul on this time, Kevin? Looks like it's Ragazio. Ragazio. Yep, it is Ragazio. It's three on Ragazio. Lau. Kevin Lau proving not to be a good free throw shooter at all. Now one for four from the line. Lau is bleeding. Bleeding from the mouth. I don't know if we can get a replay or not on there to see if it was a punch. Lau looking for a trainer. So wait a second. Kevin, the, the rule is if you substitute for a player who comes out of the game. Wait, wasn't it Lau that got fouled? If you substitute for a player coming out of the game, that player cannot come back in if he's at the free throw line. However, the difference is the sign of blood. Immediately when you see blood, you come out of the game. Clary fills in for both free throws, knocks him down. It helps for Medford because at this point, Lau would miss both of them. Ragazio <laughs> hits the deck. Ragazio known for falling on the floor. That one trying to get the ball. And Coach Mull not happy at all. He calls a timeout. 7.01 left to go in the game. 56-41. This game still is not out of reach for Medford the way Somerville has been playing. And we will let now you all enjoy another performance by 
Somerville High School varsity cheerleaders. Kevin, 701 left to go in the game, 56-41 lead right now for the Highlanders as Medford will get the ball underneath Somerville's basket. And Raskin bringing the ball up. Here he is. Fusco saying here he is. Oh, nice pass. Tipped by the Highlanders. Again, I would stop. I would stop trapping McClarity because five times now he has worked his way out of the trap. So give it up. He's a three-point shooter. Stay up on him. Nice defense by the Highlanders. Keep staying it. There's there a goes. three. Nope. Brick. Nice rebound by Ragazio. Headed with the ball now. Nine rebounds for Ragazio. Far and away leading the way for the Highlanders. Bailey for three, that's short. Oh, come on. Fusco calling for the travel. Foul on Raskin. That's actually Raskin's third foul. Team's fourth of the half. 6.20 to go in this game. Box, Celestian for a jumper. Kevin, does this guy miss? Nine points for Celestian. Shooting the lights oh. out. How he is left open at all by Fusco, I have no idea. Ooh! Nice defense by Celestian. Six minutes left in the game. 58-41 Highlanders. Mustangs just taking their time. He's gotta step up, Celestian. Jeez. Come on, Steve, step up. Take your time now. That's 16 points for McLarity. No need at all. Any of his points could have been shut down immediately just to begin the hand up. Bailey's just throwing the ball around. Oh, hey! Picks the ball out of bounds. Tony Carrington coming back into the game at this point. And Ricky Oliveira coming in for Ragazio. Get Ricky Oliveira, Kevin, is one of their low post threats. Tonight, Two points, gone to foul trouble, two quick fouls. This is his first action of the second half. Look for Ricky to get the ball right now on the block. Try to get Medford in the foul trouble. Fusco not happy at all on the sidelines for Medford, the coach. Uh oh, Garrier. Travel. Raskin now with four fouls. I think that's gonna take Fusco out of the game. He's just going crazy over there on the sideline. Garrier got Medford. too anxious there. Zero, four. Uh, headed with the ball at the top of the key. The shot clock hasn't even started yet. Oh, there we go. Carrington for three. He drains it. Three pointer for Carrington. You know what? The referee did it again. 20 points for Carrington, Kevin. Staying, leading the way, scoring, but very quiet 20, Kevin. Yeah, I agree, Jeff. Hey, ooh, that should have been a travel, but Celestian had his hand on the ball, no call there. Medford just snapping the ball around the perimeter, taking it, taking their time. Nice defense there by Celestian, but didn't make the extra pass. Number 12, David Clayton, now with seven points. 61-46 lead with the three-point shooters that Medford has on their team. This game is not over yet, Kevin. with the ball. Back up to header. They're trying to use as much of the shot clock. It's under 10 seconds now. 
Go at it now. It's Moving screen by all of them. Shoot it, headed for three. Please. Uh. Wow. A little lapse of time control management there by the Highlanders. Four minutes left in the ha in the game. Raskin, very clean for three. Ooh. Carrington, the head no header with the rebound. It's three rebounds for header. Carrington into Ricky. Where's the foul? Oh. Let's see if they call the foul on Doily. Call the foul. Call a foul on 11, Casa Major. That's his first. Ricky going to line for two, his first two of the night. Somerville actually has only been to the line two times, and that was Gurry's two misses. So right now, no made free throws for Somerville. And Lau still getting worked on there in the corner of your screen. 0 for 3 from the free throw line for Somerville. That's what hurt him in the last game against Medford, Kevin. 14 for 22 against Everett in the last game from the free throw line. Make some of those free throws. That would have been a win. However, tonight they are now 1 for 4 from the line as Ricky knocks down the second. Nice rebound by Gurrier. Tearing the boards down is Gurrier. Eight rebounds for Gurrier. Carrington with a little crossover he gets. Foul on Raskin, so he's done. Sit him down. That's five fouls on Raskin. Very heads up player, Kevin, but right now Lau is going to come back in the game for him, I predict. That's five. Carrington is going to be going to the line to try to improve on his 20 points. Again, Kevin, when T player falls out, you have 30 seconds to replace that player. You can take all the time you want. You take the entire 30 seconds. So you have a 324 left in the half. And in the game, Mike, mistake, 324 left, 62-46 lead. Coach Fusco there having difficulty in this game. Heads up coach though, Kevin, into the game the whole yeah. time. Doesn't sit down at all, moves around, very aggressive. You know, I haven't seen him sit in at all. 62-46 Highlanders. Line of coaches for Medford. Tom Reiser, Bartley, now Fusco. Harrington, one for one from the free throw line. Islanders have three out as Carrington shoots his free throws. 64-46, Kevin. This now falls into the category of a blowout. Oh. Not as long as you leave McLaren open, it won't. Oh. No. 18 wow. points for McLaren. Nice pass. Wow, had him just broke, broke his ankles. Doily cannot believe the play here. The He's replay. saying it's off Carrington. Let's see who can't see much from that replay. Had to Bailey at the top of the key. He's taking his time, trying to get some time off the clock. Went across. Nope. Carrington for three. Woo! Call that a two. Two for See, Carrington. They call that a two. How do they call that a two? 24 points for Carrington. Nice pass. Number 50, big man. Oliveira with the ball. Oh, had Chad Bailey wide open. Bailey with the ball, finds header at the top of the key, a little hesitation, he drives in. Nice pass to Ricky Oliveira for two. Ricky Oliveira now with five points. Two point, uh, two minutes left in the game, 20 point header, lead for the Highlanders. Header has really increased his 
stature here as the backup point guard, completely controlling the offense. Three seconds. Three seconds on 50. Looking for the break. Chad. Uh -oh. Travel. Nice job there by the Hounds. Quick Chad outlet from Dory with the, the pull up. Again, Kevin, that's what Chad has become so dangerous. That pull up jump shot. People think he's going to go in for the dunk. Think he's going to go in for the gliding. He pulls right up. Garrier hits number 50 right in the head, and 50 is not happy about it. 50 Rich to Silva with two. Point lead right now, and the bench is about to come in for Medford. Carrington for three, he's feeling it. That was a two. Carrington over the line again, 26 That's the worst points shot now. Basketball. He's done that like three times today. What? Step on the line. Oh, you know, you get a little aggressive there. Clarity, definitely a double dribble there, please. Silva's got some potential here, Kevin. Big body. <laughs> Behind the back by Carrington. Uh. Coach Moe calling for a timeout. I don't, I don't think he has any timeouts, does he? No, he has plenty of timeouts left. He has two timeouts after that. And now, Kyle has just pulled away now from Medford long time. <laughs> 33 <laughs> seconds left to go in the game, Kevin, and they're completely, this is where it should have been from the beginning. No excuse the first half. Kevin, throughout the game, I was talking about how Ragazio was far and away leading the rebounder for the team. Now, however, it is Gurrier with 10. Gurrier with 10 points and 10 rebounds. So a double double for Gurrier. Ragazio with six points, eight rebounds. And it looks like he's keeping the same team in there. No, actually, no, he's bringing out Gosner. He's bringing out Jocelyn, Header, Vlad, no, actually, dude, nobody yeah. even on the team. What's going on here? Seven, Please. And we got Two technical way, foul. Technical foul. Some, well, no excuse for that. And you come out of a timeout with eight players on the court. What's that? <laughs> Coach Moe is looking at Header saying, what's, what's, what are you doing? Eight players on the court, Kevin. Technical foul. <laughs> right now, nobody from Edford wants to shoot. Somebody get on the free throw line. Number 34, Raskin, Dan Raskin, obviously the brother of Adam. Adam already fouled out, so Dan looking to get his name in the scorebook. And he knocks it down. It might have been eight there, Dan. <laughs> Did he make that second one? Uh, Point of the scoreboard, he didn't. I think he made the second one, did he? Raskin out of control. Woo! Okay. Four points for Raskin. Chad, easy. See. <laughs> Kevin, and that's what we talked about before the game. Coach Malone wanted everybody on the floor. Look, with 18 seconds left in the game, Chad diving into the crowd. Chad should be out of this game right, right now. Don't want to risk any injury. Vlad having trouble. This is the first time wow, we've seen Vlad this game, too. Look at it, look at it, Nate Deal throwing an elbow. No need for that. And we That's wind up. Game. Let me add up the scores, Kevin, here. Excellent game. Excellent second half, I should say, for the Highlanders. They played a, a lot better the second half. A lot, a lot more team defense than they did in the first half. Um, they didn't let... The, um, Roger Lau drive through the lane, and at, at the same time, Roger Lau did get hurt. Um, did, he did get hurt from, uh, he, he did get hurt earlier in the, um, yeah, early in the second half, so. Right now, joining us after the game, after a 74-53 win to even your mark at 3-3, Coach Mulo, Coach, talk to us about the first half, the change between the first half and the second half, how the team completely came out with a different stature and a different play. I think the first half that 
I think maybe, if you can believe this, we're a little overconfident and try to put them away too quick. We weren't patient at all on offense. One pass, one shot. Uh, offensive glass, we got, I think we got nine offensive rebounds in the first half. And we, didn't, we didn't put anything back in. Uh, I was disappointed, but you know, this team, it's, it's like a learning experience for them. We're, exactly. we're experiencing this whole thing. Today we're the favorite, and I know this sounds crazy, but this team two years ago was 1-19. Now we're three and three, and now we got. You know, each game I believe this team can win. I mean, there isn't a team in our league we can't beat. We just have to play solid, and it's going to be. Uh, I'm hoping that this team can improve as much as last year's team improved. And uh, if we can do that, you know, we'll get better. We'll only get better. So that's what I'm looking forward to. Talk about Chris Garrett. Double double, ten points, ten rebounds. Talk about his play. Uh, Chris played. Improved. Chris played really strong. I mean, he did a nice job tonight. Uh, you know, sometimes he goes in these little mental lapses where he just stops playing, but I think he gets down on himself. He's he's an excellent player. He's a great kid, and uh, you know he's he played a great game against Everett last week. A tremendous game, and uh, he's going to get better and better for us uh, as long as he keeps his head up and keeps working. Not only Gurria, but what about uh, Tony Carrington? I mean, shooting from the outside, he had an excellent uh, second half. Definitely the second half. I think, I think with Tony, everybody expects a little bit too much from Tony. You know, he's averaging about 24 points a game for us right now, and everybody thinks every time he gets a ball, he's got to score. Now, uh, if you read the article in the Globe about Xavier Singletary for BC, we talked about letting the game come to him, and that's what we had a meeting about uh, yesterday, and uh, we posted it up in the uh, pregame. Uh, talked about letting the game come to him a little bit instead of trying to uh, force things, and I think he did that a little better the second half. And uh, when he does that, you can see he's he's a, he's a very fine player. Earlier in the game, Coach, we were talking about your team motto. Explain that to the folks at home and how that has helped your team come together in this game. Well, you're talking about ego second, team first. And exactly. uh, everybody in my team is a very good player. I believe we have the 12 best basketball players in some of them. Uh, junior high school, freshman JVs, all these kids really who are very, very solid players and have good reputations. I'm very proud of each one of them individually. But as you know, for a team to come together, you got to put egos aside. And uh, the only way this team's going to be, get better is if we put the team first. We talk about that all the time, and uh, we've adopted that model for us. And uh, it's a tough sell, but I think we're starting to buy it a little bit. Exactly. And one last thing, what do you have to tell us about um, the game that's coming up this Sunday against Tewksbury? Tewksbury is a very good team. They scouted us tonight. Uh, a good player in Element, 6'3", shooter, left hand. Uh, they run the flex offense. It very well disciplined. I think we have a little better athletes, but we have to go to play. If uh, we don't come to play, it's going to be a long night. Okay, good. Congratulations. Thanks, guys. Have a good night, okay? All right, thanks. There you see a replay right there. That was the behind-the-back pass by Tony Carrington. And let me go run down the scores here, Kevin. Four first, the losing team, Medford. Two points for De Silva and Dan Raskin. Two points for also Jeff Nadeal. Five points for O'Doyley. Seven for Clayton and Casamajor. Nine for Roger Lau. Roger Lau all over the court, Kevin. If he had played more with my closer game, it would have been a much the second half. Because they couldn't stop him. He was driving home at will. 18 points leading the way. Kyle McClarney. 18 points, shooting from threes, two threes for McLarney for a 53 points for Medford. Going over to Somerville, three points for Serrano. Serrano proving right now that he is the backup point guard on this team. You know, all due respect to Vlad who came in at the end of the game. Right now, Hedder is controlling the game and he is the backup point guard. I mean, he does make a lot, more, a lot more smarter decisions in passing the ball and learning to uh, pull it out and run the offense. And it helps too because when you bring in header towards the end of the game, as you say, you're playing with Chad and Tony. So Chad is able to not bring the ball up. He's able to work on his offense. And Chad has really improved his game with that pull up jump shot. But back to the scores, Kevin. We're Ricky Oliveira with five, Ragazio with six, Ragazio with eight rebounds total. Six points, eight rebounds for Ragazio. Ten points for Gary. And I spoke before, Gary with ten rebounds. So double double for Gary. Gary really stepping up on defensive and offensive rebounds. Chad Bailey, 15 points, and a lot of those points were on a pull-up jump shot. You're going strong, but that's the kind of thing that Chad has changed this year. He goes in strong in the hole, but now he's got that pull-up jump shot that is so effective, you don't know, the defender doesn't know whether to play off him or play up on, play up on him, so you got to second-guess yourself. And that's the best thing as an offensive player that you want to have the defender second-guessing himself, right. not knowing where to go. And lean the way, Tony Carrington with 26 points for a 74-53 win for the Highlands, and they're now 3-3, three three, Kevin. That is true, Jeff. 
The next game for the Highlanders is on January 7th against Tewksbury, as Coach Miller was saying. Um, and then they have another game the following day against Hyde Park. Uh, so it's going to get tough. You have yeah, two non-league yeah. games, both on the road. And then you come home next Friday, a week from today, which is January 12th. January 12th against That's Arlington. And Arlington, yeah. Coach Miller was telling us before the game, Kevin, Arlington, just a very fun team to watch because all they do is fire up threes from the outside. Nothing down low. They're a young team. They're just explosive shooting from outside. Yeah. And that game will be uh, broadcasted on uh, City Educational Channel 15. Sorry, Jeff. Um, and that's when we will see we see this replay. With Tony Carrington one more time just driving into the lane. Unselfish basketball to your man instant offense, Steve Celestian. And that was in the first half. Celestian winding up at nine points. I don't think Celestian missed a shot at all, Kevin. And that's what you need coming off the bench. Somebody that can give you that spark, not just coming in the game and causing you know fouls defensive, but he's coming in the game bringing you offense. Right. Well, once again, for Jeff Argenziano, I'm Kevin Scott. I'd like to wish everyone a good night. Thank you.